All right, hello everybody and welcome to my presentation of Herman Joseph Muller on Mutagenesis, presented by myself, Sarah Hoffman. So Herman was born to Francis Lyons and Herman Joseph Muller Sr. in New York City. It was actually his father who encouraged him to have an interest in living things and a love for nature. Muller excelled in public school and at the age of 16 was admitted to Columbia College. From the very beginning there, he expressed a great interest in biology and became an early convert of Mendelian chromosome theory of heredity proposed by Sutton and Boveri. While in Columbia College, Herman Muller formed a biology club and later became a proponent of eugenics. In 1910, he earned his Bachelor's of Arts and continued his education at Columbia for graduate school. From 1911 to 1912, Herman took part in studying metabolism at Cornell University and then married the mathematics professor, Jesse Marie Jacobs, after returning to Texas. With Jesse, they had a son named David who became a mathematics professor. However, in 1939, Muller remarried to a woman by the name of Dorothy Kansowicz, who had a daughter with named Helen. Their daughter became a professor emerita in the University of New Mexico. From 1915 to 1916, Herman taught biology at William Marsh Rice Institute, and during 1918, he proposed the explanation for dramatic discontinuous alterations in Oneothera lamarckana. The results of the proposal experiment, conducted in correlation with Edgar Altenberg, was that there was a strong temperature dependence on mutation rate. Olsenberg later on challenged Herman Muller, saying he had simply poked holes into the chromosomes using X-ray doses and demanded proof of the gene point mutations that Muller had talked of. Muller believed that X-rays, being a high form of radiation, could cause mutations in the genetic level. To prove this, he completed two experiments for proof of X-ray mutagenesis. The first experiment was exposing fruit flies to x-rays and then mating them and documenting any mutations found within the offspring. To track the mutations, the flies exposed had genetic markers on their chromosomes. His discoveries were marked from observing lethal mutations rather than just physical abnormalities. He found the mutations were indifferent to sex, meaning both male and female had them, and x-ray exposure had caused lethal mutations. The second experiment built off of the first. Herman used a group of X-linked genes called CIB, which were lethal to male fruit flies as genetic markers. This experiment required controlled breeding so that the male could inherit one of two kinds of X chromosomes, either the CIB or the radiation chromosome. When assessing the results, Herman inferred that the X-ray exposure caused 150 times more of the flies to die than the spontaneous rate of mutations in the control group. He later wrote his results in the paper titled The Problem of Genetic Mutation. In 1932, Muller moved to Berlin to work with Russian expatriate geneticist Nikolai Timofey Frosovsky and also met with Niels Bohr and Max Delbruck. After issues with the FBI investigating Muller due to involvement with The Spark, which is a communist student newspaper in the University of Texas, Muller moved to the Soviet Union. While he was there, Muller imported basic fly lab equipment to continue his work with the Drosophilia at the Institute of Genetics. In the year 1934, the Institute was then moved to Moscow. Muller continued to spread the influence of his work while he was in charge of a large and productive fly lab and was also able to work on medical genetics, specifically radiation effects. So thank you everybody for viewing my presentation and I hope that you were able to form as much of a fascination for the work of Herman Joseph Muller as I did. Thank you.